We've all heard it said that prostitution is the world's oldest profession. Yet while the purchasing of women's bodies for sexual gratification has been going on for centuries, still today there remains a certain stigma attached to prostitution. It has never been promoted as a desirable or respectable line of work. And women in prostitution continue to be treated as second-class citizens, or worse. So maybe it's time to reframe our ages old expression and stop fooling ourselves with references to the world's oldest profession when what we're really talking about is the world's oldest oppression. And doesn't that change the way we approach the issue? Doesn't that change the way we view the women, boys and girls who line our street corners and sidewalks or whose faces we see advertised and peddled online? In what other circumstances have we agreed as a society that the appropriate response to oppression is to sit back and tolerate or condone or even worse legitimize it simply because it's the way it's always been? None. When we see oppression we fight it and this is a fight whose time has certainly come. The current challenge to Canada's existing prostitution laws is a defining moment for us one in which we need to ask ourselves some serious questions and decide what our response to this oppression is going to be. It's also time to debunk some myths, like selling oneself is really a choice, or that what goes on behind closed doors is simply a consensual act between adults. Or what about the idea that prostitution can ever really be safe? And the most recent false sales pitch that it's Canada's laws that are putting women in danger. The decision to prostitute oneself is rarely the result of a young woman sitting down and looking at a range of available, healthy, life-giving options before her and saying, I choose this. Most often, it is a choice made for some kind of cruel survival, or not a choice at all, with young women being fooled, trapped, coerced, or even trafficked into the sex trade. Some argue it's just a consensual act between adults, that so long as it's not disruptive or happening in my front or backyard, what's the big deal? But once money is put on the table, the whole notion of consent becomes irrelevant, doesn't it? At that point, it's a commercial transaction in which the woman's body is the commodity. It's kind of like renting a car. I've put my money down, this car is mine for the agreed upon time period to use as I will. And so, quite often that looks like I'm going to drive it as hard as I want because at the end of the time period I'll hand the keys back in, walk away because it's no longer any of my concern. When and why did we ever decide it was okay to treat another person this way? Let's call it what it is. It's the purchase of a few hours of personal sexual slavery, often of a body that's enslaved full time by someone else. I have a friend who is a survivor of prostitution, and she's a real hero of mine. She once told me that prostitution isn't safe anywhere, whether it's behind car doors or hotel doors, brothel doors, or even home doors. She said it's just not safe wherever it happens. Because it's not the laws that put women in danger. It's the buyers and sellers and traffickers, largely men, who have no regard for existing laws. Changing the laws will not make women safer. In fact, if it were legal to run a brothel or to prostitute indoors, it could actually have the opposite effect, putting many of the most vulnerable women in greater risk of harm. It's time to challenge the very idea that it's okay to purchase another person's body for sex. It's time for honesty. It's time for courage. It's time for a new approach, one that goes after the buyers and sellers of sex not the women, the boys, and the girls who are being traded and treated like chattel. One that reflects a society that says, we will no longer tolerate the exploitation of some for the gratification of others. It's time for change.